If melting connectors wasn't enough, there's now a new controversy around RTX 5090s. Some of them are missing ROPs, and yes, it seems to be directly impacting actual gaming performance. That's a huge problem. More on that in a minute. We're also having NVIDIA acknowledging black screen issues on RTX GPUs. And there's just the general supply issues leading to scalper pricing. So with all of that going on, there's a lot of eyes focused on AMD with their 9070 and 9070 XT. If those can deliver a, a good performance at a good price, and maybe FSR4 ends up being a competitive upscaler, they've also claimed big improvements in ray tracing performance this generation. Is this going to be AMD's moment, or are they going to continue to miss opportunities? <laughs> Uh, well, we've got some leaked benchmarks here, but they're conflicting. One of them seems pretty exciting. I'm reading at videocards.com that they have a benchmark of the 9070 XT nearly matching a 7900 XTX. However, we also have a benchmark claiming that the 9070 XT and 9070 are only comparable to a 7900 GRE and a 7800 XT. This one coming from WCCF Tech. All my sources, by the way, will be linked to the video description. We have some other news topics today as well, but I want to start out with this whole benchmark issue and what's going on with this. So again, one of these looks exciting, the other one looks significantly less. If you're not familiar with the performance difference here, a 7900 GRE, if we're matching that, that's very different than matching a 7900 XTX. If I jump over to something like Tech Power Up's relative performance chart, if I set the 7900 GRE as the 100% baseline and look at how the 7900 XTX stacks up, they're showing it 37% faster. That is a wild performance differential. Um, I mean, if we're talking about like the 50 series only getting like generational performance uplifts in like the 15 to 20% range uh, or less, then that's like well, apparently these days it could be a multi-generational performance differential. So what is going on here? Well, these are definitely not the same benchmark. Uh, the uh, score showing it match a 7900 XDX appears to be a leaked Furmark benchmark, but there's a little bit of weirdness in how it's reported, so that's important. Uh, but then the one showing the lower results is from a Geekbench score. Let's jump into this one first, and also just side note in general where you're like, how are these scores pop out anyway and whatnot? We know 9070s and 9070 XTs are widely uh, in stock at retailers. Some people already have them accidentally shipped to them. All you need is a functional driver to get it up and running. Uh, so whether you've got that from a press driver and these are reviewers working on a review and they accidentally allowed it to upload, or somebody else somehow got their hands on it uh, and had the GPU, that's how these things start to get published. So in the Geekbench uh, database, we're starting to see some scores for a 9070 XT. Uh, and 9070. Now, where is that falling in line with other cards? WCCF Tech has this lined up. Now, keep in mind, there's an OpenCL result, and then there's also a Vulcan result. But again, these are synthetic benchmarks. This is not actual gaming performance, and that's important, because look at how we're going to uh, interpret this. Here, we are seeing that the 9070 XT score for OpenCL is actually noticeably faster than a 7900 XT, uh, whereas the 9070 is kind of in line with a 7800 XT. Uh, the 9070 XT, again, faster than the 7900 XT, but closer to that than it is to the XTX. If we look at the Vulcan results, we now see the 9070 XT actually below the 7900 XT, and massively short of the 7900 XTX, and in fact, the 9070 XT only similar in performance to the 7900 GRE, uh, and the 9070 falling even shorter than that uh, versus the 7800 XT. So, uh, what do we make out of any of this? Well, that's, it's hard to say exactly, other than we do have the Furmark score to compare with, and again, these are synthetic benchmarks, not that Furmark isn't. So let's pop over to the Furmark benchmark and see what we're seeing there. So the headline is that the 9070 XT is close to a 7900 XTX, uh, which again would be massively different than what we're seeing in the other test. Now, where is this information coming from? It looks to be coming from a tweet uh, by uh, Tomas Goransky. I may be mispronouncing that. Apologize uh, if I am. But he's saying, I think I found uh, RDNA 4 Radeon 9070 non-XT, although he later uh, corrects himself to saying uh, that it might actually be an XT version, uh, uh, with hacked drivers. 
Device ID matches the recently leaked Geekbench. There are multiple benches with a 9950X3D on Furmark. Scores are impressive, 41 to 48% higher than a 7800XT. So in other words, the actual GPU itself is reporting as a 7800XT, whereas the PCI, PCI ID is matching the Geekbench leaks that we were seeing here uh, that are reporting as actually being the 9070 or the 9070XT. Now, another thing that kind of uh, lit off in my mind as, as a uh, potential uh, uh, correlation here is remember my video yesterday talking about the leaked Monster Hunter benchmark uh, that claimed to be a 9070XT. However, it blurred out the name that was being reported by the GPU and the blurring looks a lot like 7800XT, but the leaker was claiming that it was a 9070XT. Well, what could be going on there? Is this a hacked driver that reports the GPU as a 7800XT, but is actually a 9070XT? Kind of interesting. Uh, if I jump to this on, on here, he did have an edit saying, I think it could also be the 9070XT, not just 9070, as it has the same PC ID on Geekbench. Okay, interesting. So if we go ahead and take a look at that, um, like he says, that puts the scores closer to a 7900 XTX um, uh, rather than what we're seeing uh, uh, in the Geekbench results. Now, videocards.com has an interesting comment here at the end. So they say, based on rumors we heard this week, AMD is said to be claiming over 40% higher performance at 4K games than the 7900 GRE. So this would be in line with these claims. So between the two uh, leaks here, the Geekbench results, uh, sorry, the Geekbench results and the Furmark results, uh, the videocards.com author is saying that the uh, being more in line with this Furmark result matches up to what they are overhearing as being AMD's official claims, being 40% faster at 4K games than the 7900 GRE. Now, if we jump back over to the Tech Power Up article, uh, sorry, that is the wrong thing, not Tech Power uh, article, but uh, relative performance chart. Uh, so if they're saying around 40% faster than a 7900 GRE, where would that put us on this relative performance chart? Uh, well, about 40% faster would be, uh, well, about in line with a 7900 XTX. So, the videocards.com article seems to be coming down more on the lines of expect 7900 XDX performance, so that would mean the Geekbench results seem abnormally low, but we will probably get the actual answers to these questions uh, very soon coming from AMD uh, with their uh, post saying it's almost time. We meet the next, uh, sorry, meet the next gen AMD Radeon RX 9000 series on February 28th at 8 a.m. Eastern time, 7 a.m. CT, 5 a.m. PT. Uh, also interesting to note here, this seems to be confirmation that AMD will probably not be selling a made by AMD reference model this time around because uh, while well, they say uh, they have this uh, render here, it's saying it's an artistic render not available for purchase. So little uh, additional tidbit we can gather off of that. Now, the other recent leak I could find regarding the 9070 and 9070 XT is also coming from videocards.com uh, saying that the 9070 XT is confirmed as a 304 watt card and the 9070 non-XT at 220 watts. Now that's interesting because if we again pop back over to uh, Tech Power Up, uh, we can look at the uh, 7900, um, uh, why don't we go with the XTX and then we can uh, compare its power consumption. So the 7900 XTX is a, uh, I think it was about a 350 or 360 watt card. I think we can pull that up here. Ah, don't they have the watts here? Oh man, am I totally failing you guys. I'm pretty sure it was a 360 uh, or uh, 350 watt uh, design. I think it's on here somewhere, guys. There it is, 355 watts. Sorry to waste your time looking for that. Uh, so if this is true, that would mean that the 9070 XT is uh, actually gonna be drawing less power than a 7900 XTX. And again, videocards.com is asserting that they heard that its performance will be at least close to a 7900 XTX. Now, is any of that true? We don't know at this point. 
Um, now, where are they getting these power consumption figures? They're saying it came from a tweet from Hong on Fu, uh, who had that those numbers posted here. However, that tweet has since been deleted. Anyway, videocards.com does helpfully have this chart uh, where we can look at some of the leaked specs we have so far for the 9070 XT and 9070. They're both expected to be 16 gigabyte cards, but with different boost clocks, uh, the 9070 cut down a bit in cores as well. Uh, both expected to have memory uh, running at 20 gigabits per second, which I think would make that GDDR6 rather than 6X or 7. Uh, keep in mind the 50 series cards have been upgraded to GDDR7 running uh, with the 5070 Ti and 5070 running at 28 gigabits per second. Um, and again, they are now showing that board power. That also means that the board power uh, for the 9070 XT does seem to be in line with the 5070 Ti. And the 9070 seems to be a bit under uh, the uh, 5070 board power. So interesting, seems like they're lined up to target that. The naming seam seems to be uh, lined up to target that. Uh, so interesting stuff, but we will have to wait until AMD gives the official announcement on February 28th uh, and then release date of March 6th to know uh, everything it is that we would like to know. But how about we talk a little bit more about the uh, <laughs> uh, bit of a, a new disaster or controversy, th this time for 5090s. So it is now being widely reported that a bunch of units of 5090s are seeming to be defective in that they are missing ROPs. So there was initially some reports of this uh, where people uh, thought it might be a certain card where they're pulling it up on GPU-Z. So if you look up on GPU-Z, which by the way, if you have a 5090 and you're curious if this is affecting you, uh, you can get GPU-Z by going to techpowerup.com, uh, download it from them. It is Tech Power Up GPU-Z, so get it from the official source and all that. And there is then a, uh, just it shows you all the stats of your GPU and there is a line that says ROP slash TMUs and you check right there. For a 5090, you should have, uh, I believe it's 176. However, there's a bunch of 5090s that people are now checking, uh, now that more people are aware of this and more and more people are posting that they're having this issue, where a bunch of them are only reporting 168. So there's eight missing ROPs. Now, ROPs actually can affect performance. People are, are claiming that with this, these missing ROPs, their GPUs do seem to be underperforming uh, the reported scores from people who have um, uh, all of the ROPs that they're supposed to have. So that seems like a bit of a problem. Now, why is this happening? Um, Mega Size GPU, who is a leaker on Twitter, who has uh, often had a lot of what seems to be accurate inside information, is saying the root cause is the chip. A small batch of GB202 is defective and the BIOS cannot do anything with this issue. So this does not seem to be an issue where software is reading the ROPs wrong. Um, seems to be a hardware issue. That means that this is not the fault of the board partners. Uh, so, so it's not like Asus's fault or Zotac's fault or MSI's fault. This would be that they got sent a bad GB202 uh, chip from NVIDIA. That's where they get this. So that's what this is pointing uh, towards being, which now puts you, if you're uh, one of the few people who got a 5090, um, puts you in a bit of an awkward decision on what to do right now because supply of 5090 is, is, is awful. So, uh, but if you want to get your full product, this is the kind of thing that I think should entitle you to a warranty claim for a full replacement. The problem is if board partners don't actually have any 5090s in stock, how long would you be out of your GPU um, if you send it in for a replacement? That's a, a bit of a, a problem there. And if they just give you a refund, you can't buy a 5090 at MSRP right now. So that might put you in a bit of an awkward spot again. So. Uh, yeah, this looks like uh, another issue uh, that uh, is plaguing the 5090s. Uh, so if you avoided the melting connector, uh, now do you actually have all of the ROPs? So <laughs> there's all of that. Hopefully NVIDIA actually gives some sort of official statement on this soon um, once they investigate the issue. And hopefully we find out maybe there was just one batch that was bad. That's what Megasign's GPU is saying. So um, hopefully it doesn't affect any future shipments or anything like that. Now, this is not the only issue and neither is the cable melting. Uh, NVIDIA is now investigating a black screen issue across RTX series GPUs. I'm finding this reported by videocards.com. 
Uh, so they uh, have evidence, and, and you look at it here, and I've seen these reports myself as well, that if you search like NVIDIA forums or honestly a lot of places uh, for black screen issues, there are tons of people reporting black screen issues on a variety of RTX GPUs. A lot of people claiming with the latest drivers, a lot of people claim it on their 50 series cards, uh, some people offering various fix ideas, some people say those fixes work for them, some people say they don't work for them. There's a lot going on here. Uh, but it does look like NVIDIA staff has replied on the NVIDIA forums and is saying we are still actively investigating this issue. I don't know if a fix will come as a driver update or a vBIOS update, so I haven't added it to the list. Once I have further info, I'll make sure to share it with the community. So NVIDIA seems to be aware of and is acknowledging these black screen issues, but is not quite uh, there with the fix yet. So hopefully uh, that gets all sorted out. Uh, I'll throw in as a last little bit of news that Indiana Jones and the Great Circle Update 3 has just added AMD FSR 3 frame generation support uh, and path tracing support on AMD and Intel GPUs. When this game launched, it had a path tracing mode, but it didn't. Uh, you couldn't even enable it or try to run it unless you had NVIDIA hardware. Also, the game shipped with DLSS, but no FSR or XESS. So it is looking like it is getting uh, updated with AM, uh, uh, FSR support as well as uh, frame gen support, uh, not just frame gen, sorry, path tracing support on non-NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, looks like it's also added XESS 1.4 upscaling as well, if you'd prefer to use that. Okay, that's the news I've got for you guys today. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the 70, uh, you know, sorry, 9070 XT leaks and all of that. Um, uh, which performance uh, do you think is more realistic and what sort of price point do you think will be attached to it? And I hope all of you have an excellent day.